Now, what do you need to know about Medicare? Now, if it's time for you to enroll or uh, enroll someone that you love, things are getting a little trickier, and we want you to be readier. Uh, according to National Medicare expert Ed J.O., it's trickier to enroll and make changes this year. There are all sorts of new plans, and with people working past age 65, everything is more complicated. With all those complications around Medicare, we thought that uh, Jay would be the perfect person to walk us through what we need to know about about it this year. So whether or not, again, it's for you and you to enroll or you're helping a family member, we're here to help. Hey, welcome, Jay. Hey, thank you very much for having me. So why is enrollment in Medicare trickier this year? Well, the, the plans are always evolving, and this happens every year. Uh -huh. and it's getting trickier, like you correctly mentioned, which is you know people are working beyond 65 because Social Security for retirement age you know, did you get the maximum benefit by by waiting beyond 65? So you have people working beyond 65. Right. 65 is the new 35. <laughs> so you've got all these other forces here. And that has made the enrollment to Medicare more complicated when you add all those things. Medicare complicated suit for sure. So what are the essential things we need to know before enrolling? It's a good question. The most important thing, of course, is don't procrastinate. There's lots of red tape and very complicated terminology and rules. Maximize your Medicare, the book, you know, it really is pointing out the fact that health insurance may look the same. It looks like it has the same types of terms and conditions, but actually the way that Medicare works is very different than when you worked, when you have health insurance before 65. So you need to get adjusted to all these new terms different deadlines, different enrollment dates. And if you miss the enrollment dates, uh -huh. then there can be penalties that they never expire. So what are the new plans like? Well, what you have is you have prescription drug plans, which have now been more complicated because there have been a, a number of mergers and acquisitions mm -hmm. in the world over throughout the country. So you have Pharmacy, national pharmacy chains actually owning the plan. People thought that you could use mail order for prescriptions and that was always the cheapest. That is no longer true. And then in addition to that, there's Medicare Advantage, which are kind of combined plans where both health and prescription coverage mm -hmm. is combined. And that has become much more competitive. There are many plans in locations throughout the country, almost every location, including in Utah, zero dollars a month for the premium, but you do need to check the details to make sure you get the plan that you know, fits your network and fits what you need your prescriptions you know, the best. So you is get that, the best for your money. Is that typical across the country? It is very typical across the country, and the way that I try to put it is that you want you'll want to check this annually. You don't buy the 2017 model of Camry if you can at all avoid it, if you can buy the 2020 year, <laughs> 20 a model year for the same price, right. for the same price. So you have these extra features, and some of these features are very, very valuable. I've even seen that insulin in certain locations can be termed as a generic, thereby the copay, the cost the person pays is zero. Wow. Which is a multiple thousand dollar a year benefit for persons who rely on insulin, a right. very costly medication otherwise. So I know, I know uh, that uh, there is a lot of discussion around this and that things are sort of always evolving, changing. How can people know that, that, that they're getting not only the most up-to-date information, but the correct information. Uh, anecdotally, uh, my father is looking at, you know, signing up for Medicare, and he, sure. he he has found that he, you know, he talks to one person, and he's like, okay, I'm being responsible. I know that I got to get enrolled, and they give him all this information. He's like, okay. But then because of the type of person that he is, he'll ask someone else, and he'll find that that information that they get from that person completely contradicts the original information that he was given, and then he it, it, it for him just disappears counts anything that he feels like he's been able to learn about it. Very, very, you've pointed out a very, very difficult challenge. It is very difficult to actually tell who knows what. And I recognize that. That's why I wrote this book, because what ends up happening, you know it. Mm -hmm. Maximize Your Medicare has a YouTube channel, but it has 10 minutes. People aren't there to see the entire picture 
to see how it fits them. So I generally tell persons to try to speak or to try to be in touch with someone or party that can have access to the entire set of plans. Mm. Because sometimes what ends up happening is you see one perspective, and only one, right. without seeing the entire landscape. It's kind of like, back, you know, back to my silly car analogy. You know, it's better for consumers to go to the dealership where you have multiple manufacturers there. Yeah. Because while the single manufacturer is not necessarily wrong, in fact, there are heavy, heavy consumer protections to prevent misinformation or abuse, that doesn't necessarily mean that every model is, is you know, perfect for that person. That's just not, you know, conceivable. The country is too large. 60 million enrollees in Medicare, 10,000 people a day. And that that is going to exist for the next decade. So right. the idea that one size fits all is just not possible. Uh, it's just not practical uh, from that point of view. So I do, I am sympathetic to the challenge, certainly, and especially in your case, because you're trying to help your senior parents, for example, and we're in the age, you know, adult age children trying to help senior adults. You had a grandmother before. Well, sometimes the grandmother gets overwhelmed with the administration, mm -hmm. and you try to, you're well-meaning, you try to help. But now, as I pointed out earlier, Medicare's language may look the same. It actually works differently, and these differences are enormous. We're talking with national Medicare expert J.O. about the changes in Medicaid and uh, in Medicare and the enrollment process. What mistakes do you see people typically make in the in that enrollment process? The number one mistake is is that people miss or they misunderstand the windows that you enroll. You are eligible for Medicare when you first turn the first of the month that you turn sixty five years old. And you have unrestricted rights to access any plan where you live at the best possible price right when you turn 65. Hmm. So what ends up happening is that people miss these or they think, well, I'm in perfect health. I don't take any prescriptions. And then you wait. Well, by waiting, you're giving away these free options that the, that the federal rules provide for you. So in addition to giving away these free options, which, you know, I'm a certified financial planner, you know, rule number one of personal finance on anything is don't give away free options. Right. Well, this one really is federally protected. And then beyond that, when you miss that, those windows, then your choices, your options, your ability to make changes becomes restricted. So then... You can see what ends up happening. Right. Murphy's law then Murphy's law now enters the conversation, mm -hmm. and right. now all of a sudden you can't get what you want when you want. Uh, it, as we make our way towards uh, Medicare, being a age qualified for Medicare, for those people that are maybe in their early 60s and looking towards that time, or even people uh, much before that, are there things that we can be doing to prepare for that time where we would find ourselves signing up for Medicare? Well, I'm the biased, right? I mean, the Maximizer Medicare is, is in its eighth edition. This is not my first rodeo around this type of preparation right. time, right? Um, I think also very importantly, as persons we prepare for retirement, is to consider, okay, I'm employed. I'm employed at a small employer. I'm employed at a large employer. And I'm thinking about retirement, let's call it at 65, at 66, at 67. Well, how does my financial, in, what's my financial impact going to be? Mm -hmm. Some people live in fear, unnecessary fear, meaning that they think, well, my health insurance costs $1,000 a month, which is common if you have to buy it for yourself at 63 years old, very common. Mm -hmm. But reality is, is that the moment that someone turns 65, they get access to the best plans with, with far superior coverage at a fraction of the cost. We're talking about something on the order of 70% lower in payment wow. overnight mm -hmm. on the first day of the month they turn 65. So I'm not here to say, well, it's all doom and gloom and you see these, you know, retirement disasters and time bombing. When it comes to Medicare, the rules are so heavily bent in the consumer's favor 
that if they simply understand well, you have to understand well the rules that you can access plans that fit your health and financial circumstances. So when we're looking at Medicare right now, and we should mention that open enrollment for this year is is now through December 7th. Is that correct? It's called the annual election period. So it's not actually op- open, okay. you know, quote unquote open. And so you know, these are subtle differences. And I, tr- I try to explain it to persons. These are financial contracts. So the terms are pretty specific. So it means that people who have standalone prescription plans, which is otherwise known as Part D, you have the unrestricted right to change to any other plan available in your location between now and December 7th. The same can be said for Medicare Advantage, which I mentioned earlier, Mm -hmm. which are these combined packages which usually combine health and prescription drug benefits. You have unrestricted rights to change as many times as you want between now and December 7th, the last one you select will be the one that's in effect for 2020. Okay. Are there any drawbacks to uh, beginning with Medicare right in that first day of the month that you turn 65? There can be isolated incidents, and this is why the complication that you correctly mentioned at the beginning of this conversation, which is that some persons work at employers and the employers are paying Mm-hmm. for the health insurance. Now, this is something that has to be, there's no shortcut here. And a large amount of the book, the new edition of the book, goes in depth on saying, here are these factors to consider. You can take just a simple example. You work at a small employer, the employer pays 50%. Well, 50% of $1,000 is still $500 mm-hmm. for, You know, for you. Right. Well, the open market, the unrestricted market, is $300 with terms and conditions coverage benefits, which are usually far superior to the private market. And so what happens is people do both. They overpay because they want to get the benefit from their employer, and they have weaker benefits. Mm -hmm. And so you can see $200 overpaying times 12 is $2,400. Well, it's hard to get $2,400 on the street. You know, as a practical matter, we all want to have that. No question, especially if it needs better coverage. Both. So then what's your advice for people who want to continue to work past 65 but don't want to waste any money? Sure. You have to know, in, in, and there's no shortcut to this. Yeah. You know, I'd love to tell you that you, there's a single answer that fits all, but you've already discussed this, which is you need to know the exact details of how much you would have to be required to pay if you continued with your employer-sponsored plan and compare it to what your cost would be under Medicare. Because you can actually delay enrollment in Medicare, let's just say you're 66, working full-time, Yes, it's in theory possible to, to delay enrollment in Medicare. So there's the difference, a subtle one, which is here's what you can do, here's what you should do. Right. And that's the math of money. Right. That is a math of money exercise. And there's not really a way, you know, we could spend literally weeks, and I've spent two, two to three chapters, which are still cannot tease out every possible scenario. Yeah. There's so much to consider. Your book um, is called Maximize Your Medicare Quality for Benefits, Protect Your Health, and Minimize Your Costs. Um, where can people find it or find you? The website is maximizeyourmedicare.com. There is a central place, lots of links, official links on Medicare rules as well as different coverages. There's also ways to send emails for personal inquiries. We will answer the first set of questions, certainly for zero. We'll be able to give you the 5,000-foot view. That has no charge. There is a YouTube channel, Maximize Your Medicare, not coincidentally named that way. We live in a video society. Right. <laughs> and, you know, and I've got this nasal Midwest voice and a face for radio, but even I had to give in. <laughs> I and love it. So the, so the channel is up at this point. 
Well, thanks Those for just, just leaving us with points. such some great information about how to navigate Medicare. We appreciate your time, Jay. My privilege. Thank you very much for having me. J.O. is the managing principal of GH2 Benefits based in Ann Arbor, Michigan, with individual and commercial clients nationwide. Again, to connect with him or get more information on Medicare and learn more about his upcoming book, Maximize Your Medicare, you can visit MaximizeYourMedicare.com.